Brothers and sisters, allow me just to say this before I share the word of God. That did you know that you can come for worship and fail to worship? Just asking. I want you to think about it. Did you know that you can actually come for worship? You can even be the first person to be here. And the last person to leave, but you fail to do what? To worship. I just thought I should highlight that before I share the message today. That you are being here is not worship in itself unless certain things happen. Worship has got four aspects that must take place for worship to have taken place. If one of them is missing, then worship has not done what? Has not taken place. Has not taken place. The first one is that in worship, we talk to God. So if you come and you don't talk to God in prayer or in song, you have not worshipped. If we are together, say amen. amen. This is just a by the way. This is just a by the way. This is not the sermon. I'm here to tell you that you can come for worship, but you can fail to do what? To worship. If you come and you don't talk to God in song or in prayer, people are singing you are just quiet with some mood. Prayers are being made and you don't say anything to God. You may have failed to worship. The second one is listening from God through study and through preaching. If for some reason you are unable to listen to this sermon or listen to the Bible study that we had, worship will not have taken place. Number three is fellowship. And the last one is giving, tithe, and offering. Ladies and gentlemen, God has blessed us. If you can't give tithe and offering, but you can travel around Nairobi. If you can't give tithe and offering, but you can eat. If you can't give tithe and offering, but you can drink and sleep, you will be present for worship, but worship has not taken place. That was not the sermon. The message I would like to share with you today, my friends, I've adjusted it a little bit. I told the elder that every time I go to preach, I think about it continuously. And so the message I want to share with you this day is titled, If you can't be single, you can't be anything. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. Friends, let's enjoy worship. Let's smile at the preacher. Those kind of serious faces are not good for anything. Are we together, friends? Let's smile. Let's relax. Let's enjoy. If I ask a question, you respond. Are we together, friends? Yeah. If you can't be single, you can't be what? Anything. I want you to respond, friends. If you find things very serious, they will be more serious on Monday. Let's enjoy today. Are we together? If you can't be single, you can't be what? anything. Let's repeat again. If you can't be single, you can't be what? Anything. Yeah, let me tell you the secret of enjoying a sermon is to just relax and listen. Don't try to guess where the preacher is going. You are not competent to do that. Are we together? Just relax and do what? Enjoy the moment. Don't feel like you have to assess the preacher. You are seated observing. Does he know anything? Does he know the word of God? Is he a man of the word? No, let's relax friends. Are we together? After all, I'm already here. If I'm a bad one, I'm already here. Are we together? The best that can be done is to delete the video after this. Is that okay, friends? Yeah, so let's relax, friends. I want to see relaxed faces, not suffering people. Is that okay, friends? Yeah, I could tell some people are sitting. Uh -huh. Continue. Uh -huh. Continue. I'm not continuing. Are we together? I'm not going anywhere. I'm just relaxed around here. I'm saying if you can't be single... You can't be what? Anything. Yeah. Let's enjoy worship, friends. Can't have people who are here feeling like they are the guardians to watch. Is the message okay? 
<laughs> eh, is everything going correctly? Eh, we have to guard. Who do you think you are? Are we together? Just relax. Let's enjoy. Let's do what? Relax. Let's enjoy the message. And that's how we converse. Let's have a conversation. If you can't be single, you can't be what? Anything. That's where we are, friends. Are we together? Yeah, if you can't be single, you can't be anything. This is a condition that we must first be able to prove that we are comfortable and okay with being single before trying anything. Before you try anything, be sure that you are okay and comfortable with being single. Because if you can't be single, you can't be anything. Anything means anything. I mean, there is no other definition of anything. You can't be what? I can't hear you. You can't be what? I can't hear you. You can't be what? Anything. And anything means anything. I mean, there is no other definition. Anything means anything. Your entire life is measured and predetermined by your ability to be single. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. You see, friends, to be single is to be alone without feeling lonely. If you have understood, say amen. amen. To be single is to be alone without feeling lonely. To be single is to operate without being paralyzed by a desire to be validated by another person. You are single, you are operating comfortably without feeling like there should have been another person by my side to validate me because you have the Lord validating you. If we are together, say amen. amen. To be single is to think for yourself even sometimes taking a path that others think you should not take. To be single is to operate without a life partner for various reasons. Various reasons. Either you have not found one, or the one who was there has left you, or you had one and passed away, for various reasons. And that's what it means to be single. If you can't be single, you can't be what? I can't hear you. If you can't be single, you can't be what? Let's begin. Let's read a Bible verse. Genesis chapter 2. Good theology begins in Genesis. Are we together? Genesis chapter 2 verse 15. And then we'll read verse 18. The Bible says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and take care of it. Verse 18. The Lord God said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Listen, my brothers and sisters. God, who doesn't make mistakes, created Adam single and first allowed him to operate as a single person before a helper was created. I want you to understand that God did not make a mistake that he corrected by creating Eve. God created Adam single and he left him to operate as a single person before bringing somebody else. And that's why we are saying if you can't be single, you can't be what? You can't be anything. Adam had to be single first. He had to work alone. He had to name the animals alone. He had to walk around the garden alone. He had to sleep alone. He had to eat alone. And when he was able to do it by himself, God said, you are now qualified to have somebody else. Brothers and sisters, if you cannot handle your own life, don't invite somebody else into your suffering. You must be able to handle yourself. If you are too much for yourself, nobody can handle you. We are already too much for ourselves. 
And so, brothers and sisters, the message remains today. If you can't be single, I can't hear you. If you can't be single, I can't hear you. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. Brothers and sisters, God created Adam without sin. And God had the option of making Adam, okay, before I breathe into you, let's make Eve. I think the two of you are looking good. Now, can you rise up together? No. God made Adam first and told him, keep working. And God observed if he can handle himself. He said, yeah, yeah, he's doing well. He's doing well. And Adam did not realize the need for someone else. It is God who said that Adam needs somebody else. That means Adam was self-content. He was satisfied with being single. And then God said, yeah, you have now reached a level where you can hang out with somebody else. Do you understand what I'm talking about? It is God who said it is not good for man to be alone. But today in church, oh, I'm praying for someone. I'm praying for someone. I need someone in my life. Wait for God to say it. You are not qualified to need anyone. You need to be satisfied with yourself first. And then God who creates husbands, God who creates wives will provide one for you. If we are together, say amen. amen. If you can't be single, if you can't be single, Adam had to demonstrate ability to be single without company. He was not created dependent and stuck with the need for company. He was created able to fully operate alone. And then God said, now you can bring, I can bring someone else so that you operate together. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. First Timothy chapter 2 verse 13 and 14. 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 Did I say first Timothy? Yes. Chapter 2 verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, For Adam was created first. Then who? Then Eve. The Bible is saying clearly, when God created, he was able to create all of them at the same time with their children. But he created Adam first. And then later on, he created Eve. And then verse 14, the Bible says, and Adam was not done what? Hey, read the Bible. And Adam was not done what? He was not the one deceived. It was the woman who was deceived and became a sinner. You can have that debate elsewhere, but listen. When Adam noticed that Eve had eaten the forbidden fruit, he also ate the forbidden fruit. Adam did not eat the forbidden fruit because he, he bought the devil's lie. No! No! Adam ate the forbidden fruit because he forgot that he could operate alone. As he had done before Eve was created. The Bible says that Adam was not deceived. When Adam arrived and found Eve eating the fruit, Adam knew we are in trouble. Even when Eve said it is good for food, it is good for wisdom, Adam knew that this is disaster. And Adam ate that fruit because he did not want to live without Eve. Adam was the first attempt of suicide. Because he ate knowing that he is going to do what? 
He knew he's going to die. The Bible says that Adam was never deceived. There was no deception. Adam knew, I'm taking the fruit. God said, don't eat. I know there is no wisdom. I know there is no food here. I know after this, the two of us are dying. And he ate waiting to die. He was even feeling, why am I not dying? Because Adam knew that he, he was going to die. If we are still together, say amen. amen. There is a point I want to make. Adam forgot. Adam did what? Adam forgot that he is able, he was created with capacity to operate without Eve. Adam forgot that he could operate single. Adam forgot that his life was possible and existing without Eve. Adam forgot that he had capacity to be single and fulfilled. And my brothers and sisters, that is what we forget sometimes. You see, friends, Adam forgot that he could operate alone as he had done before Eve came along. Can I tell you something, friends? Sometimes we issue condoms and contraceptives to unmarried young people, not because we don't know that sex even with the protection is sin, but because we forget that actually these people can operate without sex partners. We forget. And so you find an adult of sound mind attending the church, listening to the word of God, giving contraceptives to the daughter. That will protect the family from embarrassment, but not from hellfire. I don't know which one is lighter, hellfire or embarrassment. Sometimes we do that so that our children cannot be infected with the diseases, but they can be infected with eternal loss in hell. My brothers and sisters, I came to tell you that our biggest problem is to forget. Adam forgot. I want to tell you that all of us are created with capacity to operate alone until God creates somebody for you when he so wishes. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. Do you know what, my brothers and sisters? We are hooking up wrong people who end up abusing us, taking advantage of us, and even killing us in marriage because we forget that we can be comfortable being single. You have been single for so long that when an abuser comes along and is willing to embrace you, you accept 100% because you don't want to be single. Society has set standards and now to satisfy society, you suffer inside the house. You come with bruises, you say there was an accident in a house. How can a bed sitter have an accident of that magnitude? You are limping and you live in a bed sitter. There is no space to slide. Where do you slide? Where do you fall? But here you are. You have been beaten. You have been hurt. But because you want to maintain status that I'm not single, you go through the suffering. I came to tell you that if you can't be single, you can't be what? I can't hear you. If you can't be single, you can't be what? Out of desperation, we date the wrong person, of the wrong faith, with the wrong habits, of the wrong age, with the wrong temper, and everything wrong because we forget that we can actually, by God's grace, operate successfully as single individuals. I just came to tell you sinners that it is possible for you, by the grace of God, to be totally happy and living alone. Yeah. If you say amen, the blessings come to you. If you just look at me, you will remain that way until the end of the service. Are we together? Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah, God's church. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to respond. You can't just be sitting around getting surprised. Are we together? It's not a tourist site. It's a place to communicate. Hallelujah. 
Yeah, say amen, isn't it? It's, it's, it's healthy, it's healthy. Genesis. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. <laughs> Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. We meet brother Noah. Brother Noah. Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. Genesis chapter 6, verse 13 and 14. The Bible says, So God said to Noah. God said to who? Noah. Not Noah and his wife. Not Noah and his children. Not Noah and his relatives. Not Noah and his neighbors. So God said to Noah, I am going to put an end to all people. For the earth is filled with violence because of them. I am surely going to destroy both them and the earth. God tells Noah, I'm going to destroy everything. Everyone and everything I'm going to destroy. Verse 14. So make, so make, so make yourself, so make, so make, I want you to get that word yourself, so make, I can't hear you, so make yourself, God tells Noah, make yourself an ark of cypress wood. Make rooms in it and coat it with the pitch inside out. Brothers and sisters, in case you didn't read the Bible properly, God called Noah to first have faith as a single person before inviting others. He was not to make an, he was told to make an ark for himself. He was not making an ark for sinners. He was not making an ark for his wife. He was not making an ark for his children. He was making an ark for who? For himself. Because if you can't be single, you can't be what? Anything. God says, I want to destroy the ark. No, make an ark for yourself. Yourself. If you want to be safe, make an ark for yourself. Brothers and sisters, yourself is a very important person. But we live in an age of tell them preacher. Lost generation. Tell them preacher. Lost generation. Pastor, you really spoke to the young people. Lost generation. They are always thinking of others when God is saying, make an ark for who? For yourself. It is about you. That's why I came to tell you God's people, if you can't be single, I can't hear you, if you can't be single, we need a faith that is for myself and not a faith for others. Sometimes when we complain, we complain thinking of others, but we never think about ourselves. Oh, the church is really losing faith. What about you? Are you not part of the church? Oh, things are really changing in this church. What about you? God told Noah, make an ark for who? For yourself. The Pharisees <laughs> had a faith that was opposite to Noah's. Their faith was designed for others. Why do you look like you don't trust me? Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. Let's just, this is a diversion. Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. Let's, let's find the evidence so that you don't look at me the way you are looking at me. Are we together? Matthew chapter 6 verse 5. I want you to notice that the faith of the Pharisees was never for themselves. It was for who? For others. And that's where the problem is. Their faith was for others. Their faith was not for themselves. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 6 verse 5 that and when you pray do not be like the hypocrites for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the streets so that they can be seen by who? 
I can't hear you so that they can be seen by who? I can't hear you so that they can be seen by who? By others, by men. They do everything for others. But Jesus said, your faith and your prayer life must be different. What did Jesus say? When you want to pray, go to your house and close the first door. Then go to the next room and also close it. And when you are single, alone, yourself, with nobody else, kneel down and pray. Because if you can't be single, I can't hear you, if you can't be single, and so Jesus said, if you really want to make prayer that will hold water, do it as a single person. Go in private. Lock the door. Don't be like the hypocrites whose faith is for the public. They stand at a corner where they can be seen. They pray with vocabulary so that somebody can pick they were reading E.G. White and using King James. They pray in a manner that they want to make it unforgettable. I want to invite you to the faith of the single. I want to invite you to the faith of the single. Make an ark for who? Make an ark for who? For yourself. Make sure the sermon is good for you. If you will leave this place saying the message was good for somebody else, you are lost. This message is either good for you or you missed it. This sermon cannot be for somebody else. It's yours. Make sure that the song is good for you. Make sure the church services are good for you. Before you seek to teach others, tell yourself. If you can't be single, I can't hear you. If you can't be single, if you can't be single, you can't be anything. God began with Adam being single for him to achieve everything. Do you want to marry? Be comfortable with being single first. Do you want to get married? Be comfortable with being single first. Do you want to be single? Be comfortable with being single. Nothing will be achieved if you cannot be comfortable with being single. If you can't be single, you can't be what? Genesis chapter 12 verse 1. 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 The Lord said to who? The Lord said to who? Oh, you're still looking for Genesis. <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> Genesis. <laughs> you are still looking for Genesis. Not Habakkuk. Genesis. <laughs> not Zephaniah, not Micah, Genesis. You are still searching. Okay, keep searching. Use the table of contents. Are we together? <laughs> Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, Go from your country. <laughs> go from your people. And go from your father's household to the land I will show you. When God wanted to begin a new dispensation of faith, he separated Abraham from people. He made sure this guy is single and alone. He said, Abraham, come. I want you to leave your people, leave your country, because it's only when you are single that I can operate well with you. Because if you can't be single, I can't hear you. If you can't be single... And when Abraham accepted the call of God, now his father followed, his wife, his ne nephew, his niece, and everybody else. But the person who had to accept the call of God first was Abraham himself. What is the message today? What is the message today? God said to Abraham, 
Not Abraham and his wife. Not Abraham and his family. Not Abraham and his friends. The call of God came to Abraham as a single person. The father of faith responded as a single person. First, before anyone else came in. Let me tell you, if you want a faith that holds water, make the decision yourself. There are some characters here who need to get baptized, but they are saying, I'm waiting for my husband to make up his mind. You are lost. You get baptized. Why are you waiting for your husband? Just get baptized. Oh, I'm waiting for my wife. She's still thinking about it. Uh, get baptized. When God called Abraham, he made no reference to his family. He said, Abraham, come. When God called Noah, he made no reference to his family. He said, come. It is only after you respond as a single person that you can persuade others to come with you. And there are some of you, when you get baptized and accept this faith, the rest of the family will follow. They will be getting baptized by camp meeting, after camp meeting, because you took the first step. And so I want to challenge you to have the faith of the single people. When God speaks to you, respond like Abraham. The father of faith responded as a single person. He said, yes, I will come. And everybody else came. When God appeared in a burning bush to speak to Moses, did he tell him that go and call your wife? He told him the place you are standing is only remove your shoes. And he said, I want to send you. Uh, you know, my wife has got sheep. She just bought the other day. She's still taking care. God said, I want you to go. You must first accept alone yourself before you can convince any other person. When Moses went back to Jethro's house, can you imagine the story he gave? that I was there and there was a burning bush that didn't really burn and God told me we go. <laughs> Do you think the spouses of this day will buy that story? <laughs> Brothers and sisters, do you know what I'm saying? The reason why Moses was able to convince his family was because he was convinced himself as a single person. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. Moses was so convinced that I think when the father-in-law looked at his face and his wife looked at his face, they said, we better go or else this man will go by himself. He was so convinced that he said, God has spoken, God is going with me, I'm gone. Are you coming or you are not coming? Hey, children, let's go. Because he was convinced first. I'm here to tell you, New Life Church, if you can't be single, you can't be what? Judges chapter 14. Judges chapter 14. We will make it to Revelation. We are now in Judges, isn't it? How many books are remaining? At least by 5 p.m. we will be around Jeremiah. Is that, is that okay? <laughs> Uh, I can foresee that in the next two, three hours we will be at Jeremiah. So we are now in Judges. Judges chapter 14, verse 2. Samson, Samson. When Samson returned, he said to his father and mother, I have seen a Philistine woman in Timna. Now, not tomorrow, now, not later, now, get her for me as my what? As my wife. Samson failed because he was not able to live as a single person. Samson was desperate for company even when it was obviously wrong company. Samson fell in love with the wrong woman and even when his parents advised him, he went ahead into the love affair. He lost. And after losing the first love, Samson was dumb enough to go for Delilah, another wrong woman. 
And I know there are young people here, your parents have warned you about some girlfriend and some boyfriend, and you are persisting. Your path, we know it. I mean, your parents are not competing with you for a boyfriend or for a girlfriend. When they are advising you, it's for your own good. How can your parent compete with you? Never. It's good advice you are receiving. And you are insisting, start living alone. You don't need to be loved. Even when everyone else is being loved, operate alone and you will operate better with somebody else. You are just insisting on love. Even the person you call boyfriend, when the two of you stand by side, there is a problem, there is a contrast. Some funny character you are moving around with and people are wondering, where is this going? You end up getting impregnated by people. You will never want anyone to know they are father of your child. So you go around in embarrassment. Listen, brothers and sisters, if you can't live alone, you are not ready to live life. It is time to pray and say, God, make me sufficient of myself first. Run around, friends. Don't run around. Your spouse dies, you didn't learn any lesson. You see, when a spouse dies, you have learned many lessons because you have lived with somebody. And hardly a year has gone by, you have adopted another character, wrong character taking you to the ditch. How many lessons do you want to be given in life? Now I'm just asking, how many lessons do you want to be given in life? Can't you slow down? God even gave you a break and rested the other one so that you can think again. Now here you are about to make another what? Mistake. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Slow down. Look around. You are free to remarry, but it is not an emergency. You messed up and you have just survived by a whisker. Get used to being you alone yourself. Don't be, oh, I don't know how to live without someone. I don't know how to live with someone. Ask the Lord. He will enable you. Hallelujah. Amen. The failure of Samson was the company he chose. If Samson had remained single, he would have achieved more for longer. But Samson was unable to be single. Can I tell you something interesting? Because Samson was not able to be single, Mungu ni nani? <laughs> Who is God? He made sure he had no eyes to see any more beautiful women. Eyes were gorged out. Because his problem was when he sees he wants, he wants. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> I thoroughly love you. You are the only one. I've never seen another. God removed the eyes. But God knew this guy even without eyes can look around and say, hey. And so God put him in prison. Prison where he is alone with himself. And after staying in prison long enough in loneliness, understanding himself when he was comfortable with himself in prison, then God said, I think you can do the job I had given you at the beginning. Come. And he was taken to the pillars. And he did the job because he had now learned to be with himself. Ladies and gentlemen, if you can't be single, I can't hear you. If you can't be single, if you can't be single, you can't be anything. Samson had to learn to be single and that's when he went and focused. If Samson had not stayed in prison and he had just rushed to that temple where people were worshipping, he would have said, can you take me where the girls are? Take me where the girls are. But he said, take me where the pillars are. Why? Because singlehood had taught him focus. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. Oh, we have fast forwarded. We are now in the New Testament just to make sure the saints don't lose faith. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 7. You can even read verse 8 and 9, which was ably read. 
I wish that all of you were as I am. Apostle Paul says he is a single man. But each of you has your own gift from God. And one has this gift, another one has that. Apostle Paul was single after a possibly failed marriage. Possibly failed marriage. Apostle Paul must have been married. Must have been. There is all possibility he must have been married. And after what is possibly a failed marriage, Apostle Paul serves God. But his focus is sharper. And he says, I wish all of you were like myself. He says, you, you, you single people, I wish you would remain single. And you married people now that you are married, just stay that way. Apostle Paul wishes that we were all single, yet here we are wishing we were married. Are we okay? <laughs> All the single ladies, are you here? Yeah, Apostle Paul says, I wish you were single. And here you are saying, I wish I had someone. Are you okay? I'm just finding out, are you okay? I wish, that's what Apostle Paul says, I wish this church was just full of single people who can sit and listen to the word of God without receiving texts. Honey, we are getting late. Can we leave now? Can we leave now? Now, if you are just single, there will be no such text coming to you. Hallelujah. Amen. And he says, I wish. I wish. But here we are wishing the opposite of scripture. Are we okay? Apostle Paul wishes that we were all single, yet here we are wishing we were married. If you can't be single, you can't be anything. Apostle Paul was so comfortable and okay with being single that it doesn't show in his life. No complaint, no prayer, and no nothing of desperation. He was okay. When you read the letters of Apostle Paul, you don't pick the smell of a single person. I am okay. We are here in winter, but it's very lonely. It is July and it's very cold. You don't find that in Apostle Paul. He just goes on with his ministry. Listen to me, single people who are in the house. Go on with your life without punctuating everything you say and do with your singleness. Eh? Mukoapa single people. Are you here? that you cannot be single and your life is punctuated with your singleness. Uh, can we sing? I would have sung, but you know us who are single people, can you do this? Yeah, I would have done it, but us who are single people, hey! Is this a new punctuation in language? <laughs> Apostle Paul was single and it is only here that he makes reference. The rest of the Bible books he wrote, 13, 14 of them, he does not make a reference to his singleness. He is focused on what he is doing. Can't you focus on what you are doing? Be so busy in what you are doing that nobody remembers whether you are single or married. That's how it should be. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Apostle Paul was so comfortable and okay with being single that he even taught the married without apology. There are single people here, who, if you tell, can you teach the class of the married? No, you know, uh, we are not asking you to come and share your experience. We, we never call people to share their experiences in the marriage class. Tell people the ideal of what God expects and let them tow the line. Oh, you know, I'm a single person. I cannot teach married people. The married people know themselves. If they knew anything, they would be happier than they are today. Apostle Paul was successful because he was comfortable with being single and moved on without much ado. Hallelujah. If you can't be single, if you can't be single, there are people who are not responding. If you can't be single, let's talk about Jesus. If there is any greatest single person on earth, it is Jesus himself. <laughs> you married people, who is your greatest example? Because the greatest example for single people is Jesus. Who is your example, you married people? Because the single people can point at Jesus and say, there goes our example of the greatest single person, 
Jesus, you married people. You have Adam, he failed. <laughs> you have Abraham, he betrayed the wife and went with the maid. Let me tell you, who do you have? <laughs> Jesus. Who did, it, who did I say? Jesus was single, wasn't he? He was. Jesus was so comfortable being single that there is no recorded complaint of him wishing to be married. Jesus went about his ministry without a single mention of loneliness. And if there is anyone we can learn from as single people, it's Jesus. That you can so live your life that nobody will remember you making a wish. If you can't be single, Jesus was so comfortable being single that his singleness could easily be missed even after reading the four Gospels. If you read Matthew, Luke, Mark, John, and finish them, if you are not careful, you will not even discover that Jesus was what? Was single. And that's how I expect all the single people to operate. That you can operate so comfortably in this church, at your workplace, in your neighborhood, that nobody will even pick the idea that you are single. You are so comfortable in your skin, single people. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Jesus was so comfortable being single that he talked about marriage and divorce like one who was married and he didn't begin with an apology that he's single. When Jesus was asked about marriage, he went straight away and said, God made them two. And what God has put together, no man should put asunder. He did not begin and say, hey, I'm sorry, I want to delve into a topic which I myself have not been able, but just understand I'm going to quote scripture. Are you a fool? <laughs> I mean, first be okay. Answer the question and get out of the stage. What is this all apology about single apology? Hey, be comfortable with being what? And let me tell you, you will attract more people in your direction when you are comfortable being single. But when you are not comfortable, somebody comes to your life, you cling on them until, hey, am I safe? They take, hi, have you reached? Hi, have you arrived now? Hi, did you see my 10th text? This is my 24th text. Hey. Who's got time for that kind of drama? Go get a life, learn to live with a phone that doesn't respond. Then look for someone. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Not every time you are checking the phone. Why, why, why no response? Why have they not texted? Why have they not called? When they called you one hour ago, you are sick. And there is a national referral hospital that deals with your cases. Are we together? And you can get a tablet to be assisted. You could be suffering from anxiety or something else. Are we together? Get comfortable with your... Because if you can't be single... I can't hear you. If you can't be single... Single people must learn from Jesus and be comfortable in their situation. Not pretended yet hurting within, but genuine Comfort in being single. Now, we are not asking you to go around pretending. Yeah, I'm okay. <laughs> I, I am okay. <laughs> I am okay being single. <laughs> no, that's not what we are asking about. We are asking where you are thoroughly comfortable. Are we together, friends? And that can only come from our Father. I'm saying that can only come from our Father. I'm saying that can only come from our Father. Amen. I say that can only come from our Father. Amen. Some people are in dangerous relationships, but they will go ahead and marry or get married because they are afraid of being what? Single. There are people even who are planning a wedding, but they have already seen so many red flags, but the thought of being single 
they are going ahead. And these days in Kenya, I don't know about other countries, there are so many deaths in marriage. You can't walk blindly just because you are afraid of being single. Jesus himself was single. You have good company. Dump that character and save yourself. What will happen now that we all know there is a wedding? Just abandon it. We will recover. We will gossip. We have to. We will talk about it. But along the way, a new story will come. And in fact, this is the right time because the politics of Kenya will confuse us. Are we together? <laughs> so we will not even remember. By the time there is a new president, what nobody even will remember you canceled a wedding. <laughs> if you can't be single, <laughs> some people are living with a partner who will kill them. The reason they haven't left is because they are afraid of being single. Now, we are not promoting people to leave their marriages. But if somebody is threatening your life, dying in that marriage is not martyred. You are not a martyr. Where we seem fear, Dean, you have not died for faith. Are we together, those of you who are planning to die in marriage? That is not martyrdom. You will not be listed among martyrs. You will not be even listed among war heroes in Somalia. You will appear nowhere. Are we together? Victims of gender-based violence. Listen, my brothers and sisters. If somebody is threatening your life sufficiently, separation is okay. We have not said divorce. Separate until they come to their senses or until they disappear. You deserve a life to serve God, not staying there. Somebody is pounding you every day. Somebody is hammering you every day, and you are just persevering. It's not the will of God. Tarif and your ear. It is not the will of God for you to be hammered every day. You are not serving anyone. And by the way, for your information, you are not even helping the children. They will be traumatized the rest of their life. So you are neither helping yourself, nor the children, nor the church. Look at the embarrassment when we come to bury you that you are killed. Can you look at how we will be feeling embarrassed around there? So you are not helping Some people will be used and abused by relatives of a late spouse because they are afraid of being single and must attach themselves to the pests. Oh, since we paid dowry, you can't leave. Even though your spouse died, you have to stay. Then the same people who tell you arrive in your house 10 at night. We may not know, but we know. Let me tell you, friends, it is better to severe those ties and live a life to the glory of God and find yourself another partner. Let me tell you, we are not bound by traditions. I'm saying we are not bound by traditions. I'm repeating to remove all doubt. We are not bound by any tradition that contradicts the Bible. Go ahead and get married. God will bless you. Even if the whole community curses you, it will boomerang bang on, back on them, but you will live a happy life. You can't have people telling you you can't get remarried, and then they are, they are sneaking into your house 11 at night. Oh, Shemeji, I'm here, Shemeji. Hey, I came, I came. Shemeji, is there hot water? Shemeji, can you fry something? Shemeji, can you cook? Let me tell you, that's not the kind of single life that God has called you to be. If you understand me, say amen. amen. If you can't be single. <laughs> Jesus succeeded because he was okay with being single. Jesus was not preoccupied with his single status. Jesus was not preoccupied. Oh, I'm single. Oh, I'm single. You know I'm single. You know us who are single. You know sometimes us who are... Jesus was not preoccupied with his singleness. And pray that God will save you from being preoccupied with yourself. Hallelujah. Jesus did not spend time hoping and wishing that someone came by his life. Jesus was okay and comfortable with being single. Now, let's, 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 let's read another verse. But we are saying if you can't be single... You can't be anything. We are almost halfway the sermon. Is that okay, friends? We are almost halfway. Now, Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. Pastor told me to preach until he gives me a signal. I've been looking at him and he's saying, go on. Are we together? <laughs> Matthew chapter 22, verse 30. 
Matthew chapter 22 verse 30. The Bible says, For in the resurrection they neither marry nor give in to what? To marry. The Bible says, When we get to heaven, will we be married people or single people? I can't hear you. When we get to heaven, will we be married people or single people? I can't hear you. When we get to heaven, will we be married people or single people? I can't hear you. Say it loud enough until the married get worried. I'm saying, when we get to heaven, will we be single people or married people? I can't hear you, friends. When we get to heaven, will we be married people or single people? Single people in heaven, eternal, forever and ever and ever, we will be single people. And that's why we are just saying, if you can't be single... Even eternity ways it boy. You can't make it. <laughs> if you cannot handle being single, can you imagine where we are going? We will just be single forever. And your wife is there, your husband is there, but you are single forever. You meet each other. Hey, my wife. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hey. <laughs> if you can't be single, eternity will scare you. That's why small boys and girls always ask this question in the youth class. It's now how will it be if we go to heaven and there is no marriage? <laughs> By the way, marriage is not made of sex. Are we together? Yeah, some people think that marriage is all endless activity of sex, so they are thinking it's very exciting. No, no, no. There is paying bills in marriage. Are we together? And there is adjusting to each other and many other things. So in heaven, God is going to ensure that we are just happy with him and we will be so satisfied being single in eternity. We will just be praising him and wondering why it didn't begin now. Are we together, friends? If you can't be single, I can't hear you. If you can't be single... If you can't be single, you can't and won't enjoy life in heaven, friends. If you can't be single, you can't and won't enjoy life in heaven. We need to be comfortable and okay with being single because that will be our life in eternity. You see, friends, the opposite of being comfortable with single is desperation. Desperation can make us lose focus and the energy that is required. The biggest problem single people have is they are so desperate to find a life partner that they are not focused at work, they are willing to relocate from a good job in Nairobi because there is a prospective life partner in Kilifi. You are sick. Are we together? That a prospective life partner, a prospective life partner in Kilifi, you abandon a good job in Nairobi to go and see if it can work. That is desperation. You must first be comfortable in your skin. That's the point we are making today. You must first be comfortable in your skin. If God has blessed all aspects of our life, desperation to hook up should not drive us to failure. Because when desperation in your singlehood grows, it will affect your work, affect your health, affect your spiritual life, affect everything. And so when they say uh, it is time for this, you walk home. Because everybody is staying married, married with their families. I'm the only one who looks desperate in new life. So the moment closing prayer comes, you march home in anger. You are losing. You are losing. Hang around and be comfortable. Married, I'm single. Married, I'm single. Married, I'm single. I'm okay, by the way. It's cool. Are we together? People will avoid or abuse a desperate person. When you are desperate, people avoid you. Or they abuse you. Be careful about being desperate. In order to move from single to married, we must first be comfortable and okay with being single. In order to live a fulfilling life as a single person, as a widow, as a widower, as a single parent, we must first be comfortable and okay with being single. So that when you are living with your child as a single parent, you are not always talking about the spouse who died or left. Yeah. Uh, so my daughter, I know I had told you, but I want to tell you, you know, when your father left, hey, I mean, that's what you said yesterday, you said last week, you, you said last month, you are affecting the child. 
Be so comfortable until the child knows it is possible. In order to live successful marriage life, we must be comfortable and okay with being single. By the way, a, a person who can live comfortably as a single person becomes an excellent husband and an excellent wife. They become excellent because they don't come with desperation. They come to make a contribution. Young people, if you can be comfortable and okay with being single, you can with ease avoid peer pressure. I mean, be okay with yourself. Be different. Everyone else is going left, you are going right, and it's okay. That's how the world is. After all, the successful people are the few. Salvation comes to single individuals and not to groups. God does not save families. God saves individuals. If, if salvation comes for individuals, it is safer to first be comfortable as a single person. If you can't be single... Hey, if you can't be single. And so, brothers and sisters, allow me to pause here and say that this afternoon there is somebody who needs the grace of God so that they can live a single life. So that after they live a single life, then God's will will be revealed. God may provide a partner. God may make their marriage better. But first, you must be comfortable and okay with the idea that you are a different individual. If we are together, say amen. amen. And so I want to make a call. There is somebody who needs God's grace. Because you see, friends, God can enable you to live comfortably as a single person. Yourself, you cannot make it. But God can enable you. And if you want enabling from God, there will be prayer offered today. Prayer will be offered in this house today. Hallelujah. Amen. Is there anyone who wants enabling to live a single life? Are you there? You show by standing. Are you there? Anyone who needs enabling to live a single life? Anyone who needs a labeling to live a single life. <laughs> you know, my business is a preacher. So I'm not in a hurry to end this sermon. I can always begin again in case I notice you did not understand. So I'm beginning. Are we together, friends? I'm beginning. Don't worry. I'm beginning. We have said that even if you are married, you must first be comfortable to live as a what kind of person? A single person. So when you see married people seated, either they misunderstood the sermon or they don't want the prayer. Are we together? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. You need to ask yourself, is this an ability you want God to give you today? Single parents, single people, married people, is this an ability you want God to give you today? Let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, our biggest weakness is that we are so desperate to be attached to others that we can sacrifice even faith to be attached to others. But today we are praying for the gift of being comfortable and okay with ourselves so that from that point on we can become better husbands, better wives, better single parents, better single individuals. We pray for this grace today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.